Welcome to the Scale Model Club and on this week's show Welcome to the Scout Model Club. And on this week's show, painting and weathering the Lancaster. <clears throat> uh, first up, uh, you saw the undercoat at last time. There was a few little gaps and bits and pieces. So this is me just filling the gaps with some Vallejo putty. Uh, it's good stuff this, I've only just discovered this. Um, you put it on in your little thin nozzle applicator and then you can just wipe it with a wet cotton bud because it's water uh, it's made with water rather than a solvent so you can just sort of lick your finger and smooth it off or lick a cotton bud and smooth it off but generally it's a lot easier to work with and a lot less sanding now before we start painting I'm going to mark out the panel lines uh, a lot of people do this with the paint um, I decided to do this in my pencil uh, so that's a very soft pencil. I think that's about a 4B, something like that. Let's have a quick look. Uh, yes, yeah, a 4B pencil. And you just literally draw the panel lines on. So just trace around the panel lines, give them a good bit of uh, graphite on them. and shade them in and then because it's a 4B pencil and it's very soft you can then just rub the line with a cotton bud I'll show you that in a minute um, and that gives it the sort of a uh, sort of an airbrushed look should you say it gives it like a soft soft edge buff look you can do this after you've painted it as well it is actually quite a good uh, it's quite a good thing to do after you've painted it. Um, but it's also a very good way of getting panel lines if you don't actually own an airbrush or you do hand painting. Um, as long as you put a couple of light coats over it first, you'll be able to see them through the paint. Thanks everybody for watching, thanks for uh, liking and subscribing and if you do watch and you don't subscribe, make sure you subscribe, push that notification button as well. So, uh, first colours going on, this is MIG Ammo's Dark Earth uh, and I'm using this, I'm not a big fan of it but I'm using it because I've got it in the tub. I'd much rather be using the Tamiya, if I'm honest. But, having said that, of all the trouble I had when I was doing the Spitfire, look, it is going on very nicely. And it is a nice tone, it's a nice colour. Uh, I'll show you at the end of the video, but what I've done with the side windows is I've actually used a product from Humble called Maskol, which is a liquid latex, and you literally paint it onto your clear pieces, uh, and it uh, covers them so you can spray them, and once it's got off and it's sprayed, you can then take it off, and obviously it's all masked up. Um, I do that for the side windows on these lanes. I've done one of, this is only the second Lancaster I've done. Um, and I do that because it is so difficult to mask up the windows down the side of it. I'm still not 100% sure that I might actually look nicer if I didn't put the glass pieces in and just fill over with some clear glue. Let it go clear because then it will look like glass. But we'll see what it comes out like. Uh, I'm doing the colours and the camouflage first. 
because um, it's there's a lot less to mask up this way. So I can paint all this bit on the top and then just mask it all up and paint everything else black. As you can see, I just put a light coat on there. So just, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but you can just see those panel lines through the paint. Nice even coat. So I also do this a lot like doing a brush. Now it's not thinned down, it's straight out of the bottle, but I will put one coat, light coat on and give it a few minutes and then stick another light coat on just to get a nice even colour. So that's the brown completed. Uh, now back to my Vallejo stuff. Um, this is Vallejo Dark Green, uh, which is out of the Battle of Britain set because it's the, generally the standard green that goes on the old brown green camouflage. And I'm going to do this freehand because I quite like doing the freehand camouflage. It's probably not as good as if you masked it, but I'll let you into a secret. I don't like masking things up. Now the first coat of the green didn't go on very nicely. I, I don't think the Vallejo likes going over the top of the ammo paint. I, could be me. Uh, so what I ended up doing was um, I put the pattern on, um, filled it all in, and then I redid it once it was dry. And it come out quite nicely, as you will see. So you can just see on that V I've put on that wing, can you see where the, the paint has pulled a little? That was the, um, that's what I didn't like. So um, 
not on camera, I should have shown it on camera really, but all I did was give that a really light sand on the green so that it was smooth and just whacked over it again. And actually I painted over the whole of the uh, green just to give it all a little bit of a nicer finish because it for some reason it just didn't take I probably should have um, sanded that the brown down a little bit I think it's a little bit smooth the Megamo finish was too good I think so there we go that's the camo finished I quite like the look of it it's quite nice in a on a big scale I always, I always struggle on the Spitfires and the little 172 the little fighters because it never I'm never hundred percent happy with it but that I'm quite happy with so next up uh, we'll do a little bit of masking across the top half now it's all dry uh, see how the colors have dimmed now it's a lot drier uh, so yeah, we'll just mask the coloured pieces up. This is Tamiya's masking tape, the 6 mil stuff. Brilliant stuff. Really like it. Um, I've tried lots of different types of masking tape. I still use big standard 2 inch decorating masking tape to do big areas. But this stuff, if you want a nice fine line, it's fantastic. It's a little bit awkward doing it, but took me a few attempts but it came off all right in the end obviously across the engines and across I did across the front as well just so you got a nice definitive line between top and bottom and smooth the edge down with a cocktail stick just to make sure it's stuck right to the edge so you don't get any bleed through you always get a little bit of bleed through uh, as soon as the tape comes off, there's always little bits that you need to touch in a bit. Right, so there we go, and I think I'll get myself a nice big piece of two inch masking tape. I'm going across the top of the wing. I'll just show you this one wing because um, I did exactly the same on the side of the aircraft and on the other wing. So put the six mil masking tape on first to give yourself a good edge and then you just mask up to the edge of that with the uh, with your decorators tape or masking tape or electrical tape whatever you're using so you don't even have to be to the edge because if you leave flap over like that um, the paint won't go past it but you'll get like a nice feathered edge Worth, it's worth trying. Uh, so yeah, leave it like that. And what you do is, if you spray it, if you spray it flat, like straight down onto it, um, you'll get the edge, but it won't go any any further. But it saves you having to sort of cut it about and try and be really accurate with the masking because you don't have to be. Right. So this is Tamiya's NATO black and goes on like a tree. Thinned 50-50 with Tamiya thinner. The the uh, airbrush is a harder and stain back. Um, it's not an evolution. It's ultra. It's their cheaper version of the two. Um, and it's a brilliant airbrush. Uh, to be fair, it needs a new needle and a new um, air cap, whatever you want to call them, because uh, it is getting a little on the worn side now. The detail stuff is getting quite difficult to do but if you open up the taps it will do quite a large area quite nicely can heartily recommend it for everyone I'm not going to weather any of the black. I did genuinely think about putting some white wash on it so that all the panel lines come out white, but I've tried it once on the other hand I did and it just ruined it. So I'm just going to leave it black. Uh, I'm not also going to put any chipping or scratches on it, uh, mainly because they didn't have many. My grandfather worked 
at worked was in the RAF and was an armourer for um, the bomber wing and uh, always said to, always used to say to me that the pilots would always walk around the bottom of their aircraft and make sure there was no scratches on it and if there was a scratch they were they were painted in because they didn't want the underside of the aircraft picked up by radar. So that's one wing. Let's get the other wing out of the way. You can see just there in the uh, background the way I've masked up the fuselage, like I said, yellow tape 6mm first and then the masking tape over the top of it. Pressure, the pressure in the airbrush is about 1.2 um, and it's a horrible old compressor, not an old compressor but I don't think it's got long in it because I've given it quite a bit of teddy but she's still going. It's not got an air tank on it so it runs constantly, I should, I should, the next one I buy will have an air tank because uh, to stop it from running constantly but it's fine as it is at the moment. Gives a finish I'm happy with. Hope everybody's well. Uh, hope everybody's staying safe. And on the eve of another lockdown, or probably gone past the lockdown by now, uh, plenty of time for you guys to all get in and do some modelling and show us, show us some pictures. Comment on the videos. Tell us what you're doing. I'd love to see what you're up to. This is still part of the Remembrance Day um, build, so this is obviously this is going to be the aircraft part. The next episode will be me trying to mount this on a plinth um, with it dropping poppies instead of bombs. Hopefully, the guys from the Facebook group will enjoy it, and it will be something a little bit different from the trenches. Move that out of the way before I paint that. As you see, I've painted all the legs to the to the tripod. I think I might try and invest myself in a nice air spray booth soon. All right, so this is the liquid mask I was talking about. It's uh, purple. Uh, you just pop it, pop your pop it on your brush, um, and if uh, and then you just paint it on the area that you want masked up cover it on let it go let it dry then you can just paint over the top of it uh, and if you're quick enough um, you can actually clean your brushes in water to get rid of it or a solvent it's either one but you do have to be a bit on the quick side because it will ruin and make sure you use an older brush because if it does stay on the stick on your brush it is going to ruin it and I put the same stuff on the sides but I don't know if other people do the same but this is by Humbrill and it's, it's brilliant stuff. I've used it quite a lot. Used to use it in big camouflage jobs, but I don't do that uh, since I started hand painting my own camo. Yep, so that's that done. Just need to let that dry. Um, you do need to give that a good couple of hours to let that dry. Uh, you, you can tell when it's dry because it changes colour. And we can demask everything. See what we got. Gonna try and do this without taking the masking off the cockpit because obviously I do want to now give it a 
clear coat, clear varnish, just to look at that, it's a lovely line look. It didn't bleed anywhere. I was really, really pleased with it. A bit awkward to get it off of the tail planes, but that's because I'm trying not to break them as I pull it off. So I just use a cocktail stick to raise the edges of some of the awkward pieces but you need to be a little bit careful because you don't want to pick the paint. Well, I was very pleased with the effort. Very pleased with the outcome. So once all the masking tape's off, I'm going to give it a nice clear coat, and that's with Tamiya's XF22 Clear. I have actually got some of the Super Clear from Mr. Hobby. Uh, I keep meaning to give that a go, but that's a uh, enamel, so I'd need to find myself a breathing mask and probably a spray booth. I didn't realise it was enamel until I bought it. Also, I haven't got any enamel cinnamons to clean the brush. Oh, sorry, to clean the airbrush. I think this might actually be the first video I've done where I haven't actually pulled anything off camera so you can't see what I'm doing. Make a change, will it? It's almost professional. Almost. Do I get too cocky? Oh, there he goes. So there we have it. Black and camouflage. All done. Now this is me. This is what I'm showing. So once you've finished you can pick off the mask goal with a cocktail stick like that and it just pulls off um i think someone did show me i think it's blue tack if you roll up like a little bit of blue tack in your hand and roll it over it it picks it up in the blue tack and it does ruin your blue tack so it left a little bit over there it went a little bit over but there's nothing that little bit of touch up won't make but it's a lovely easy quick way of masking something if you don't want to muck about with masking tape cocktail sticks let's do a bit of um, decals always put one in me uh, in my video so it's got some mark fit strong there the whole plane has been covered in a clear that's warm water so give it a few minutes to move about paint a little bit of mark fit on the area that you're going to put it on Wait until the uh, sticker moves or slides about on the backing paper and then just a slide into position. Cheat a little bit here because I unstuck it myself because I was in a hurry. So, so there, see how it's moving about. And you can now put it onto the wing. Bosh. And once it's on there, give it a coat of, uh, once it's in the right place, Give it a coat of Mark Fit again, and it'll, it'll hunker it all down and stick to all the panel lines. This one's a little bit awkward because I didn't quite put enough Mark Fit so it wouldn't move. So then I had to move it with a bit of tweezers and force. But yeah, cover that, let that dry. And if you come back to it and that hasn't sunk down, just Put it down again, give it another coat with some mark fit and let it work its magic. So, decals on, 
Let's add another coat of clear to seal the decals on. Now this is MIG Ammo's Brown Wash for Green Vehicles. And what I'm going to do with this is give it what they call a pin wash. So I've got a really small brush and just dab it on the panel lines like that. Dip, 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 dip. And you'll find the paint will run along the panel lines. And it'll make them all darker and make them stand out quite nicely. So just watch me do that. And then the reason I pin wash like I do is because you can actually cover the whole wing with a big wide brush and cover it all in the um, and then let it dry and wipe it off. Um, I've never found that to be, I've never been able to get that to work. It always sort of semi ruins the uh, paintwork I've done. So I do the pin wash because I find it easier to clean up. Because once you've got it all covered you can just wipe, you can let it dry, let it sort of dry for 10 or 15 minutes and then you can come back and wipe it off with a damp cotton bud. Make sure you wipe in the direction of the airflow um, because if you just smudge it a little bit or you don't quite get it all off it looks like a uh, bit of a running dirt, you know, a whoosh of dirt. A bit like a side of a dirty car
So that's all the panel lines on the wing completed and painted with the MIG ammo dark brown for green vehicles. I think that's a nice shade. It comes out nicely on the green and the brown. I think I got it in a... a, a uh, it was part of the um, Fury kit. Part of the uh, weathering of um, Olive Drab. Uh, but obviously you can buy it on your own. Right, so once that's dried, I'll give that about sort of 10 or 15 minutes. I just pick off the bigger pieces and then wipe wipe the whole lot off going in that direction. You need to go in that direction, like I said, because you draw it all down and it gives it like a, a smudge. It smudges the right way. It brings out the panel lines um, and it, it gives it a nice effect. I quite like that. I do it on quite a lot of my aircraft. Um, the only way I wipe that the opposite way is when I'm taking off a lot of um, wash that's left on the on the wing. And then once I've got rid of it, I swipe it up and down like that. But as you can see, it sort of darkens the panel lines, gives the panel lines a bit of a uh, smudginess and a dirty appeal. It's done a lot of sortiness worked hard uh, there's nothing on the cotton bud it is literally just damp so I just dip it in a little bit of um, water and then squeeze it so that it is literally damp uh, don't rub it too hard either, just literally just brushing it over the top. So see the see the effect it gives, you can see like the, the panel lines there that look sort of dark and that's a, a mix of the, that's the other wing I've done. Uh, it's a mix of like the panel lines we put on before we painted the colour and the wash uh, that's the wrong one not that one wait a minute that's the one so this is uh this is called a tamiya weathering master good stuff i like these um a bit like makeup uh so you, you've got four in this one i've got snow dirt and this is soot so all you do is you rub the little applicator on it and then obviously you can draw it down the aircraft like that and it leaves a smutty sooty mark which would be where the exhaust come off it's also good for any kind of easy exhaust staining so if you want to put it on the side of your spitfire any of that kind of thing it's really really good easy to use easy to clean comes with its own applicator it's brilliant uh, so anyway, this comes to the end of the video. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, and the next video is going to be um, the diorama part of it. So the Lancaster is pretty much finished now because I've put the guns on. Just stuck the guns on there. So we put the wings on and I've got the propellers to paint black. And that's pretty much it done. So the next video will be me setting this up on a diorama and making it look like it's dropping poppies. So thanks very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time.